Hey everybody, it's Hylian Alchemist, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Red. In the last episode, we finished off that rather long training route, and in this episode, what we are going to do now, is that since there's probably not much else, is that we are going to fly right back into Saffron City, because if you remember last time, we actually did go there, but we didn't do much. It's only just to um, get that one TM that, um, that we talked to our uh, to uh, Ariala. And so we are back in uh, Saffron City again. This time we're th this time it's going to be for the majority of the time. We're going to be there for the reason, and well, you know, it's for something that is actually well rather long and frustrating. Oh yes, and by the way, something that I just noticed. I do apologize if you can we can see here that the video is um, kind of having a desync issue for some reason. I honestly don't know why that is. But maybe it probably will uh, get better later on. So anyways, um... Yeah, there is a certain building that we're going to be going to, and... It, guys, it is very long. It is a very long, well... Uh, I might as well just consider it a dungeon, because that's what it seems like. And yes, where you can see here, uh, this place is overrun by Team Rocket. And you know, uh, before we go on, um... Just a little reminder is that, uh, like, if, um, like, you probably remember how previously we, were, we weren't able to go into Saffron City because the guards were thirsty. Which is a kind of lame excuse there. <laughs> um, to those of you who are using my Let's Play as a guide and you're having trouble trying to get to Saffron City and you're like, how the fuck did he get in here? Well, um... I'll just uh, go ahead and explain again. Uh, to get to Saffron City, you just have to go to the very rooftop of the department store in Celadon City. Uh, buy one of those drinks from the vending machines, any one of those, and then go back to the gate, and then the uh, gatekeeper will notice you have a drink. He'll uh, take the drink, and he'll let you through. And that's how you get to Saffron City. So, thought I'd just go ahead and tell you for convenience sakes. Oh yeah, take a look at this here. This is rather weird. This rocket guy, I'm unable to talk to him, and just look at that right there. He teleported right back to his position where he was supposed to be. That is supposed to be the uh, security guard for this building right here, which is known as the Sylph Company, which we're about to get get to. And like, he was right there. I was trying to talk to him, and I was like, "What's going on? How come I'm not talking to you?" And then he just teleports over there. That has never happened to me before in this game, at least for such a game that is filled to the brim, well, very bug heavy and glitch heavy as well. And I was like, what the hell just happened? That was rather weird. So anyways, here we are at the Self Company, and that is actually uh, what Team Rocket is after. after. And by the way, this is going to be the very last kind of dungeon in which we're going to be facing Team Rocket, because afterwards, then we won't be uh, battling them again. We want to deal with them. And yeah, these are uh, some little warp tiles they can take. They'll take you to some other... Uh, Random floors. Well, not, this, not exactly randomly to their exact other tile. Of course, I never really use those. Because, um... It still doesn't mean just to uh, not get lost. I usually just go up the stairs and just battle through all the uh, rocket grunts. But yes, it is a very long dungeon, and... It's actually going to last for about three videos. Well, I mean, like... Like this video for half the um this dungeon, the other the second video for the other half, and third video at the very beginning is the uh, very end. Yeah, it is that long. This this building has eleven floors. I'll say this one more time: eleven floors. Like holy shit, it's it's very long. It really is. And strangely enough, other uh, Pokemon games didn't really have that. This is probably the only time in which uh, you'll be uh, dealing with a dungeon like that. It, well, the only kind of game, actually. So there are going to be a lot of Team Rocket Grunts to battle in this dungeon. I know, it's certainly not very dungeon-like, like most examples, but... But I might as well just call it a dungeon, so... Because of how long it is, well, at least for one thing, I actually got my beer ready. Yes, I am holding on to a beer that I have right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and open this right now. This is a bottle opener I have here. There we go. 
I think we did this without even spilling it. So, this will be very fun indeed. Very fun. I'm gonna take a little toast. Ah. And yeah, by the way, that, um... That beer I'm drinking right now, it's called the uh, Best Damn Root Beer. They say it is the best damn root beer ever, but... You know, I've had better root beers, mind you. Of course, uh, yeah, it, it actually does contain alcohol. It's the only, um... The only kind of root beer that I know that uh, that actually does... It's only 5.5%. So... Not exactly sure if it's ever gonna get me drunk. In other words, just, um... Make me act like a total jackass. No, but it's, it is giving me a little better aftertaste right here. Well, that's what alcohol is for. But yeah, not just for the uh, Team Rocket grunts, but like, you know, scientists or... Or some very rare trainer class. And yes, by the way, this is the very first time we're encountering a scientist. Um, scientists, they normally specialize in electric types. I think it's, if I remember correctly, sometimes they'll uh, do do poison types. I think I'm not sure my I'm not, I'm not sure exactly myself, but from what I know, it's mostly electric types. And usually they uh, they always go for Pokemon based off in inanimate objects like Magnemite and Voltorb. In other words, the very creative designs. But of course, if you have a ground type, then that, he should be no problem. So. Should be easy, of course. <sighs> yeah, of course. I know. I mean, it, it's it's a very long and th this this dungeon here really does drag, especially when you have to uh, like battle these Steam Rocket Runs. So when it comes to things that really do drag for quite a while, well, you know. Sometimes I really gotta make myself feel better with the little booze. Just this, uh, this beer that I have with me. Not that it's ever gonna make me feel drunk because of how little alcohol it contains. And yes, those doors are here. You do need a card key for that, which we will get about halfway into this building. Afterwards, then we'll just, uh, backtrack and get to the other rooms that we haven't gotten to because it was, because they were blocked off. And yes, prepare to get this song stuck in your head while you, uh, while you trek through this building. Because you're going to be uh, listening to that over and over, the way it just loops. You'll hear that so much, it's never going to leave your head. Trust me. And of course, there are some self-employees which uh, don't really do much, except they just uh, panic. They're like, oh no, what do we do? Our building has been taken over. So, let me get this straight. There is a criminal organization, and you adults right here cannot even solve any of your problems. Like all you, all you grown up, grown up adults who are workers of this building, and you really can't do anything about dealing with that crime organization. All you do is that you just stay there and like just do absolutely nothing and just hope that some miracle can happen. And yet, for the most part, you actually rely on an 11-year-old kid to do all to do all the heavy lifting. That's what it's about. Yes, everything... Team Rocket just being, uh, getting, getting their asses handed to them. All because of an 11-year-old kid. I'm just kinda starting to remind me of South Park, like, just how, um... How the adults are always too, um, idiotic to do anything, and yet it's always, um... It's always the four kids who, uh solve the problems in each episode. Yes, we know the current status of the self-company and how Team Rocket's practically taking it over. You know what this beer kind of- uh, this root beer that, I'm, that I have right here, it kind of does taste like shit. I mean, it does have some of the alcohol, like I've been saying a lot, but... You know, I've had better root beers. I, I, I've had better root beers. This one, 
why do you even call the best damn root beer? I, I, don't, I don't get you. I, I, why do you even call this the best damn root beer when, if I, when I taste it, it just doesn't even taste that great. It, it's, it, it doesn't taste as good as, um, all the other root beers I've had, especially A&W root beers. So, what is this? Are, are you really false advertising here? Whoever brewed this? Also, here's another trainer of interest, of course. Um, we already encountered this trainer, but... But he is a very, rather unique, ironic, and particular uh, Team Rocket member. Or you probably couldn't tell from the spray. That is... Yeah, we're battling another juggler. A very rare kind of thing is that this juggler is a member of Team Rocket. Never actually, uh, never would expect that, huh? But yeah, if this, uh, if this dungeon is gonna pretty much drag on, if it's gonna be a very long dungeon, and how much it's gonna drag, well, you know, sometimes without any alcohol with me, without any beers, I won't have anything interesting to say. So that's why I really want to keep this commentary consistent and entertaining to you guys. With the little bit of booze right here that I have, speaking of. <sighs> oh yeah, but I, I, um, I wasn't quite paying attention there. That is, uh, Mr. Mime. Another, uh, psychic type, um, doesn't really have any other, um, evolutionary families until Gen 4 where we got, uh, Mime Jr. And Mizu grew to level 36. That is cool. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness, you dropped your balls again. <laughs> Anyways. <sighs> I think I'm saying, like, best damn root beer. It even says, like, everywhere. Let's see. Hard root beer, which says on the top, best damn, contains alcohol. And the official title, best damn... This name beer says it everywhere. What else does it say? To learn more about this delicious brew, check us out at bestdam.com. Okay then, well, I would learn more about this quote-unquote delicious brew and ask you guys, why do you false advertise here? Why? It's just so funny. Hang on a second. It's just funny that, despite that I honestly think that this, um, this beer doesn't really taste that great despite what it says here, it's actually the only kind of beer that, it, it's actually my kind of default beer, basically. Now, granted, I am not a heavy drinker, per se. Only on occasions when I would drink some alcoholic beverages, but, but I'm not real heavy on drinking. Just in some certain times, or on special occasions. Anyway, so now we got the curve key, which means that we are now able to access the other rooms that we couldn't before. So, what I did there was that I just uh, used the elevator. And yeah, you can actually use the elevator if you want to, but I'm still taking the stairs. Well, if you want to go back to the Pokemon Center, which is what I just did. I would just take the elevator. But now that we have the car key, we'll just go ahead and backtrack through this uh, building, and we'll, um... Then what we'll do is that we'll just, um, enter through the doors that we couldn't before. And we'll see what's in store for us. Probably more uh, trainers or other items that we can take. Bingo! The car key opened the door. Huzzah for that. Ah, <laughs> self employ My ass, because we're about to battle you. I actually kind of want to make some room in this bag that I uh, have right here. There's Skull Bash, there's Swift, and there's Payday. I think I... Yeah, I decided to get rid of Payday because, um... Not all that powerful. I mean, it does uh, give you extra prize money. But that's pretty much all there is to it. And talk to this lady right here. Um, she'll give you this TM, which uh, contains... Self-destruct, 
Yes, one kind of move in which we uh, prove our worth against Koga. But you guys know what self-destruct is, if you've uh, already seen it. It's kind of like a uh, Pokemon wanted to commit suicide. I think it's called a suicide bombing in Japanese, or was it explosion? I don't know. I don't really know for sure. Yeah, support team rocket more than you support self. That's good to know. I didn't really mean to talk to you, but whatever. So I'm here as a hyper potion. Of course, we got a lot of super potions, though. Whoa, oh, wait, no, did do we? Oh, oh, wait, yeah, yeah, that's right, I, um... Still had some, uh, super potions left. That's right. And go up through this floor. Yeah, there's, uh, not much else to say here about this, uh, building that we're still in. Well, let's go right up there. And I see another scientist, uh, right after I switch my Pokemon first. Well, actually, just stir at the, uh, Pokemon party. Or, no, no, I, I don't... I don't switch them around. Pokemon are your loyal soldiers. Where you're part of Team Rocket, you never treat them friendly. That's what it's about. So, I guess, uh, looks like I'm starting to feel somewhat buzzed or something. Well, sounds like I'm I'm a bit buzzed, even though I may not be. I mean, I only, this is only my only, uh, bottle of beer for, um, for today. I mean, just, just one. Of course, it's not making me totally drunk and just... I don't like a total jackass. That probably would have been. Alright then, um, I do believe we're back at the fifth floor. If I uh, remember correctly. Hmm, maybe, maybe I am starting to get a little bit buzzed. Which I can't be. Oh, god damn it, we're out. We have no room for items. Oh, well, let's get rid of move, and yes, I, uh... Yeah, I decided to get rid of Rage there. Because I just know how broken it could be. Ooh, protein! Sweet! And let's see what's down there as well. Probably just uh, more items. Well, actually just uh, one other item that we can see here. Which again, no more room for items. That's one thing I really hate though. Because whenever there's a new item that I want, but then it says no more room for items, I, I hate having to get rid of some of the items because of it. And TMO9 contains takedown. It's a pretty powerful move, but it is one of those uh, re recoil moves, so you want to be careful with that. Now let's see, how are we on time? Uh, yeah, not much left, I should say. I think this is where we, uh, end this, uh, video off. Well, after I talk to this guy, of course. Yeah, so I'm sure... Yep, that's right. It's me. It is totally me. Yeah, so I guess that's about it for this video. Um, let me just, uh, take one more... One more swig of this beer. Okay. Yeah, I think that's about it for this video, so... Anyway, sorry if I uh, had not didn't have much interest, not much things inter that is very much things that could be interesting to say. Oh man, it, it just feels like I'm starting to get a little buzzed here because of this. I know it is kind of like a drinking game, just having to go through this this um, building while having a bottle of beer, and I don't know. I'm I'm I might be starting to feel a little bit buzzed here. I don't know what it is, but that, that, that's just that's just what it is here. So. Anyways, um, yeah, I, uh, wanted to make this commentary or entertaining at least, but I guess that's pretty much all I can get. 
All right, then, so I suppose in the next episode, we're going to continue with the self company. Sweet. That's, that's going to be fun, right? It is. It's totally going to be fun. So, anyways, um, don't know if I have. See you guys uh, later, I guess.